In this video we're going to talk about the pen tool. We're going to just kind of go over how to use the pen tool and then we're going to talk about a couple of the useful things that you can do with it. So first for the basic overview. The pen tool is located right over here in our tools panel. It's It looks kind of like a calligraphy pen. And so we'll go ahead and click on that and here's what the pen tool icon looks like. Now you'll see that if I just start to click around my document I'm creating points and Photoshop is drawing line segments in between those points. And if I go back over my original point, we see that sort of circle come up, that means complete the shape. If I click on that we get a completed shape here in Photoshop. Now this kind of shape is what we call a vector shape. It's different from the normal kind of images that we're used to dealing with, um, photographs and that sort of a thing. Um, a vector shape is different in that, as you saw, it has a number of control points. Um, and then there's a mathematical formula that describes the line that goes between each of these points. This is pretty neat because it allows us to scale vector graphics uh, to any size we like without losing any quality. You know that if you were to enlarge a photograph, uh, the bigger it gets, the blurrier it gets. Well, this is not true with vector graphics. And vector graphics are also nice because after we've created a shape, we can always go back and select any of these control points and move them around. And a new formula is created for a new set of lines, and so we can modify our shapes any way that we want at any time that we want. So we'll just start by talking about how to manipulate these shapes um, first. So you've already seen that by clicking around the document we create points and Photoshop automatically creates lines going between those points. Um, and you've also now seen me actually select and move around some of the points and so I'll first talk about how I did that. So let me go through here and just kind of remove this entire shape. Okay, so we're just using the regular pen tool here. And again, we just sort of click and click and click, and we start adding points. Um, and as we've already talked about, we get this sort of circle to complete a shape that we're drawing. Um, and you'll see that over here on layer one, there's nothing actually there. If I turn that on and off, this shape stays. That's because the shape is not actually drawing pixels. Again, it's just drawing a shape defined mathematically in Photoshop. You can find this in a different panel, not in your layers panel, but in your paths panel. I'm going to just drag this into the screen here and I'll dock it in with my layers. So here's paths and you'll see that we have something called a work path. Work path is the default name of any path you create when you just start clicking with the pen tool. So once we've got some points defined and we've made a shape, we can start to edit it by holding down the control key. That's the command key if you're on a Mac. And you'll see how our cursor changes to this white arrow, the component selection tool. And If we click on our shape, our work path, you'll see how all of the points reappear. All right. Now if I keep that control key held down, I can manipulate parts of this. So if I were to click on this point, you see how it becomes selected. And still holding down that control key, I can click and drag, and now I can move that point around. If I release the control key, we go back to the regular pen tool, and you'll see now if I go over an existing point, it becomes a pen with a minus sign. And if I were to click on any of these points, they're deleted. You see? Now if I go over a line segment, you see that it changes to a plus sign. That's to add a control point, which I've done right there. Now you'll notice when I clicked here, two extra points appeared here. These are actually points that are connected to this control point that I just made. Um, and I avoided using them when we created our first shape, but let's talk about them now. You'll see that if I were to move, again holding down the control key, if I were to move this point, something rather different happens. Rather than getting straight line segments from here to here and from here to here, we get curved line segments. Now what's going on here is that these little satellite points are defining part of that formula. Remember we said that there's a mathematical formula that describes how a line goes from one point to the next, to the next, to the next, and so on. These little satellite points are controlling how that formula works. And you see that they kind of shoot out sideways here from that control point and so the line still goes to this other point but it starts shooting out sideways before it gets over there so it creates a curve. Now if I hold down the Alt key, the Alt key is also the Option key on Mac and I click on one of these points you'll see that I can move it individually and you'll see how if I drag it further this way and this way it starts to affect how that curve happens. Same thing over here I hold down the Alt key you see how it changes into this little angle icon. And once again, I can affect the curve on that side. Now if I hold down the Alt key and click on the control point, we lose our curves completely. 
you see this this icon that we were seeing this uh, this sort of angle icon is also the equivalent if we go over to our pen tool here of the convert point tool um, so all that we're doing when we convert a point is we're converting between uh, something that's got these curves and something that does not have curves um, but again we don't have to select it here we can do it by holding down the alt or option key and clicking and dragging on a regular control point or just simply single clicking to get rid of those curves so again we control and drag to move our points around alt and drag to define our curves alt and drag these little satellite points here to refine our curves so before we move on to the next section I'll just say one more thing about doing this kind of manipulation with these points I said that we can hold down the control key or the command key on a Mac and we can select points like this we can also um, as with most things in Photoshop hold down control and then the shift key to select multiple things so if I hold down the shift key which I'm doing now and I click on another point you see how now two points become selected and this is kind of neat because now I can hold down control to move and I can actually drag two points at once by just clicking on the line between them or by clicking on one of the points and I can even control shift and click all of the points now I can do things like transform I can warp which as you see will also add control points to cover the shape that I've made and I can even copy and paste these points onto other paths which is what we're going to talk about in the next section I'll just hold down the control key and drag over all my points have them all selected and now I can copy them for pasting into another path later on so now that we know how to create a work path and we know how to modify the points on the path and change the shape as we like let's do some things that are a little bit more useful because really we haven't actually drawn anything yet so the first thing that I'm going to do with my work path active is I'm going to go up to layer new fill layer solid color and we'll just click OK uh, for a new layer dialog and then we'll choose a color any color we like it doesn't really matter here uh, we can always change it too and we'll click OK if we go over to our layers panel what we see here is that we've created in place of our old transparent background layer we've created a color chip a solid color fill layer and it has this what looks like a layer mask icon is actually a vector mask icon um, you'll see that layer masks and ve vector masks appear basically in the same place as one another now a vector mask works just like a layer mask so if you've seen any of the the videos using layer masks where we paint away parts of of an image that's basically what the vector mask does the difference is that a vector mask holds all those control points and all the formulas for all of those lines so if we select our vector mask we can once again pull out our component selection tool by holding down the control key and click on that path now we've got all of our points we can click on one we can drag it and now you see we're actually changing the mask so I mean this is very handy for being able to to modify shapes of things being able to edit drawings after we've created them and all that sort of thing and a solid color fill layer with a vector mask is completely editable we can change the color at any point that we want as well as editing the vector mask and we can even do what we talked about earlier where we can create a path copy its points and paste it into another path to create another path I'll go up here and change from shape layers over to just paths um, you'll notice that it switched on us when we clicked on our vector mask thumbnail um, whenever we select something that's already a shape layer the pen tool defaults to creating new shape layers so we'll go back and select just to create paths now I'm going to go in here and create just by clicking holding and dragging I'm going to go ahead and create a shape here just like that and that's a path so if we go back over to our paths you'll see that now we have another work path and we have our color fill one vector mask that's this mask right here um, so we'll go ahead back into our paths we'll select our work path we'll hold down the control key remember that gives us our component selection tool and we'll click on that path now we get the points and I'm just going to still holding the control key I'm going to click and drag over those points oh, missed one so control shift click that selects all of them now I'll go ahead and go edit and copy and now I'll go back over to our vector mask basically we're just clicking on another path here we make sure that uh, we've set our settings here to subtract from shape area and now we'll just paste um, edit paste or control V and you see what's happened here 
Now the shape is pasted, and it is pasted subtracting from an area. So if we look at our thumbnail, we've actually got a hole cut in our shape, and that's represented here. And it's still completely editable. We can click on our shape layer. That brings up our path. We hold down the control key, click on one of our paths here, and now we get the points, and I can edit any part of the shape that I want, however I'd like to do that.